Okay, today we're going to make <clears throat> one of these little uh, sort of folk signs. Uh, the interesting thing about it is we're going to make it out of 2x4s. Not uh, the full size of a 2x4, of course, but I've got some old scrap 2x4s I found on the side of the road. And what I'm going to do is slit them, <clears throat> cut them in half to about half inch or so thick and glue them together to make the backboard and then we'll cut that out of uh, on the scroll saw and then we'll also use part of it to make the lettering may have to make some more and the horse and um, then we'll uh, glue those letters down along with the horse on the board probably stain the board or wash it or something to make it look good and interesting I got two copies of the pattern because I want to use one just to cut out the uh, background and then the other one I'm going to use to uh, set up the letters for cutting also. So we're going to work on that and uh, see what we can come up with. The first thing we want to do is take our 2x4s and split them down the middle. It's going to be about 14 inches long from top to bottom roughly uh, and about uh, eight and a half inches wide again roughly but uh, so we'll make the uh, the two by four is probably about 14 inches long in length okay so let's do that first okay we got the uh, two by four cut to about 14 inches long it doesn't really matter if there's any knots in it or marks on it or holes in it or whatever because remember that's going to be a uh, rustic type of sign so we can tolerate any of that that we have on here but what we want to first of all do is split this down the middle actually not down the middle they're going to be one half inch thick so we probably get two out of this anyways uh, I don't know if we get more than that we'll see and we're going to do that on the table saw we're going to take this and just zip right through back and forth until we get it cut down and re-sawn as they call it uh, and ready to go so here we go See, I've cut my first piece out, about a half inch thick, and we're going to do the same thing to this one. Uh, cut it down again, and uh, if you don't feel comfortable with your table saw doing this, you could also use a band saw or uh, some other way of, uh, or just buy the boards uh, uh, half inch thick. But uh, again, I'm trying to use up some old stock, so I find this to be the best way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this one now same as we did the other. I'm going to use the bad side uh, because that's used on the bad side and we'll put those together as the back of the board. So here we go with the next cut. Okay, we've got a second one now. Actually, almost got a third one, but not, no luck. This is a little too thin. Um, we could, I suppose, 
use that and then put it on the planer and bring everything down to size. Might be a good way of doing it actually. We'll just uh, put those three together. I think three of them will probably be enough to uh, make this wide enough. Let me go get the pattern. Okay, two of them would be too thin, but three of them is just enough to get that pattern on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and uh, I think we'll run these through the planer and bring them all down to the size of this third piece. Should be very nice. So let's do that on the planer now. Okay, I've cut those uh, <coughs> strips out of the 2x4. Brought it down to three of them. I ran it through the uh, table saw again on the edges to straighten out all the edges. And of course I ran them through the planer so that they'd be very close in size. Now after we get this thing glued up uh, and it's dried, we can give it one final pass through the planer to make sure everything is nice and smooth. Again, it doesn't really matter if you got knot holes in it and things like that. Uh, as to the uh, effect of this old sign that we're trying to make. All right, we're going to take the glue and uh, glue along the edges here right now. Some glue on here, generous amount, on one edge, and then just uh, smooth it out, and then put the uh, board down. I'll do the same thing with the other one, the middle one. Some glue on there. Okay. Bring that and make sure it's all smoothed out. It's okay if it leaks off. We're going to clean this up later anyways. Put that right in there next to the other one. And just slide that third one over. Press them all against the back wall of the clamps. Get yourself two nice clamps to uh, fasten this down. And then just tighten them up. And don't try to move away on you, of course. Straighten them out a little bit. You don't really have to put a lot of pressure on this. I mean, it's not a piece of furniture that's going to have to carry a lot of weight or anything. All right. So we got that down there. Take a paper towel now and clean up this residue of glue. Doesn't really matter, we can always take it off later. But to clean it up now is even better. Okay, we're going to let this sit here and dry and we'll come back to it either later or tomorrow one or the other and we'll do our cutting for the backboard of this sign. Alright I did a further resaw <clears throat> of the 2x4 and got a couple of pieces of uh, blank that we're going to need. <clears throat> These again are about half inch thick about the same as the backing board. And we're going to take these letters, which I've cut out of the pattern, and we're going to place them down on here so we can cut them out on the scroll saw. And uh, we're going to want to do each letter individually because uh, it makes the sign look a little more dramatic than if you piece them together on a barrier on the bottom. And I didn't want to cut out uh, the backboard just to have the, the letters uh, show through. Uh, I'd have to put another backboard behind it in order to make that work effectively. So I thought what we would do is just cut out the letters and uh, we'll glue them back down to the backboard when we're ready. I'm going to take some of this painter's tape of course as we always do. Put it down on the surface. And we go put some glue on the back of this with a glue stick. Okay, we use the glue stick on the lettering. Put it on the back here. Stretch this out on the board. Doesn't have to be that fancy. We're going to be cutting these letters out of this anyways. 
Black Horse Tavern. We're going to do the same thing with the numbers later on too, and the horse as well. But for the time being, we'll just work on this and uh, get these cut out. Take this and I like to flip it over. Take my knife and cut off these strips along the back. All right, we're ready to go. Drill some holes in these uh, letters so we can have some entry blade in a couple of them. And uh, the rest of them we'll just cut out. And um, we'll do that at the scroll saw. So I'll meet you over at the scroll saw after I finish this drilling. All right, I've got a number five reverse blade in here. And what we're gonna do first is cut out the entry holes in the middle of the letters. Now, my hand might get in the way on occasion, but I'll try not to get it there too often. Um, what I'll do is I'll do a couple letters and then I'll speed it up so you won't have to get bored silly watching me cut out letters. But you'll get to see how the whole process works anyways. All right, here we go. Let's put this blade through the first entry hole, which would be the top of the B. Very simple cutting job. Nothing complicated here. Right. Okay, we got the first top of the B button. Second part, the lower part of the B. Okay, we finished all the letters for the sign, and uh, we have them all gathered over here on the side. What we're going to do is take these to the workbench, of course, and we'll uh, peel all the papers off them, and then we'll run them through the sander a little bit, smooth them out, round over the edges, and eventually we'll paint them and. Uh, We'll start to put the sign together. But before we do that, I'm going to go cut out the number 1776 <coughs> and also the horse to get those ready. I won't bother to film those. Works pretty much the same as this and uh, not that complicated. So I'll come back when we're ready to put this thing together a little bit. Okay, we've got all the letters and the numbers that we need. And uh, I haven't cut out the horse yet, but we're going to do that next. 
to do the horse, I found that uh, he's a little bit taller than the four inch uh, division, which isn't really four inches either, uh, of the two by four. So, as I did with the backing board, I took a couple and slit them down the middle, or slit them down to a half inch anyways, and I'm gluing those together now. And we'll use these, for, we'll use this uh, blank to do the horse later on. Okay. Okay, we're going to take um, <clears throat> each of the letters now and we're going to sand them down to see if we can get rid of these little fuzzies that are around the edges. And to do that, I'm going to use my uh, sanding mop, which is attached to my, sea f um, my sanding f sand flea, as it's called. And see if we can get these smoothed out and rounded over a little bit. Gotta watch your fingers so you don't sand your nails off. Okay, got our uh, sanding done here, and uh, these look a lot neater now. When you round over the edges and uh, you smooth out the wood, uh, they look a lot better. So uh, I'm going to do this with the rest of the letters now and get them ready for uh, setting against the backboard eventually. Okay, I've laid out all the letters on a little piece of scrap wood. And I'm going to paint them black now. I'm going to use this Ace uh, Premium Paint and Primer. And it's a flat enamel, which I'm going to, I'm going to try for a flat uh, coloration to these letters. And the horse, too, eventually. Just spray them down like this. <coughs> Move this little block of wood around so you can get the angle. <clears throat> like color on all sides. Try not to get the can too close to the letters because it'll just blow them right off the board for you. That won't be much good to you. Okay, I'm going to turn it around again. Get the top part. We're going to let that dry now and we'll come back for that later. Okay, our glue ups have dried pretty good here. Uh, this is going to be for the horse and this is going to be for the backing board. So, what we're going to do now is run them through the uh, planer here and see if we can smooth them out a little bit. Okay, our boards have been planed down, but pretty smooth. We don't want them too smooth though, because we want a rough effect to this. 
Okay, I've glued up the horse and the backing, uh, which we're going to cut out on the scroll saw. Did my usual painter's tape in the background. <clears throat> got the board nicely surfaced, and we got the pattern glued down with a glue stick. I use the Staples glue stick, but that's not uh, uh, necessarily the one that you have to use. You can use any type you want. You can use the spray adhesives, whatever you please but I prefer the uh, glue stick. So we're going to use the same blade, which is uh, a <clears throat> number five reverse tooth blade, and tighten that down. And we'll get to work cutting. Okay, we got our backboard cut to shape, <clears throat> and as we did with the horse, we're going to peel the uh, paper off, uh, sand this down a bit, and then give it a, uh, actually with this, we're going to do, it's a, it's a rough piece of wood, but what we're going to do is sand it down nice and smooth, and then uh, I'm thinking of probably just staining it. I was going to do it with a gray wash, but I think maybe a, a nice... Uh, dark brown stain would be nice on this. Uh, the wood has a nice grain to it, so it should look pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to go get this thing ready to go. Okay, I finished doing the backing board and uh, peeled the tape off it, yeah, sanded it down pretty good. And uh, I've taken this stain, it's called the uh, English chestnut, and gone over it and uh, using a paper towel and it looks pretty good I think it's going to be uh, a very nice uh, backing board for the black letters on the front okay so uh, I'm going to let this dry now and uh, I'm also letting the letters and the horse dry and after all that's dried I think we can do our glue up so we'll be back for that in a little while Okay, I've got the uh, lettering all done now. They're painted black, and the background has been stained. And now I'm just gluing each of the letters down individually, which is a pain in the neck, but it has to be done. And I'm trying my best to keep it straight as I can. So what I did is I put a little uh, level board at the bottom of each set of letters, leveled it off as best I could, and then... Uh, put a drop of glue on the back of each of the letters and rested them against the bottom of the uh, board and that way they'll all stay pretty much in line it's not going to be perfect but looking at this from a distance I don't think you're going to notice much uh, difference all right I'm going to do the horse next and the numbering and that'll finish it off okay I got the horse on there now and I got 1776 and it's not looking too bad what I'm going to do now is just let it dry, let that glue dry. I use CA glue to, dry, uh, to put these items on. And then I'm going to take it over and give it a coating of uh, satin spray, uh, clear spray. And that should finish off the project, so I'll come back with that. Okay, the glue finished drying. I sprayed it now with a uh, satin clear coat. And I'll give it a couple of coats and uh, I think we'll be pretty well done. 
Well, I hope you like this project, and uh, you can get the free pattern by clicking on the link down below, of course. And don't forget to click the like button, and also, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, why don't you do it while you're there? Thank you very much for watching.